In this theorem, we prove another squeeze theorem, this time for sequences. If you have three sequences, A and B and, and C and, and they're all real numbers, and it turns out that you have this property, that is BN is jammed between AN and CN. After some point, it doesn't have to be initially. Because the conclusion is only talking about as N goes to infinity. And if the limit of A sub N equals L, and the limit of C sub N also equals a L, then because B sub N is sandwiched in between the two, then the limit of B sub N must also be L. Okay, so let us prove this. And this is going to be a definition proof. Let us look at this right here. The limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals l. That's the same statement as, that is, if and only if, given epsilon greater than zero. There exists an N1 such that whenever N is bigger than N1, that guarantees us that AN minus L in absolute value is less than epsilon. The second limit. tells me a similar story. The limit as n approaches infinity the limit as n approaches infinity of C n equals L why that's the same statement as given any epsilon greater than zero that there exists an n sub two such that whenever n is bigger than n sub two that implies that c n minus l is less than epsilon. Okay, now we're gonna pick the larger of the two. Let n equal the maximum of these two numbers. So, whenever n is greater than capital N, we have two things. We have that a sub n minus l is less than epsilon. And we have this statement here, that C sub n minus L is less than epsilon. But this statement here is the same as negative epsilon or L minus epsilon is less than A sub n, which is less than L plus epsilon. Likewise, the second statement down here tells me that C minus epsilon is less than C sub n, which is less than C plus epsilon. And then everything comes together. L minus epsilon between 
C sub n is in between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. And this is if n is bigger than capital N. But I can rewrite the, this statement a little bit differently, and it is still when n is bigger than n. I can say this part, L minus epsilon is less than A sub n, which is less than B sub n. We're given that. Possibly it said equal, or better say equal. Less than or equal to B sub n, which is less than or equal to C sub n. But C sub n is known to be less than L plus epsilon. Okay, that is, that is, for n bigger than capital N, this is strictly less than B sub n, which is strictly less than L plus epsilon. But that's the same as negative epsilon is less than B sub n minus L, which is less than epsilon, which is the same as B sub n minus L in absolute value is less than epsilon. Ah, you mean for n bigger, little n bigger than capital N, it guarantees this. We're done. Therefore, the limit is correct. Therefore, the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n equals l as well. It equals l. It has to. It's jammed in between. What's going on here is here's l. Here's L plus epsilon. Here is L take away epsilon. And epsilon can get, get smaller and smaller. I'm just blew this up a million times, for example. And here is, let's actually draw this solid. And in the middle, I'll dot L. What we know is, is that a sub n's are always less than the b sub n's or equal, which is less than or equal to c sub n. Okay, so let's see if I can do this. So there is this brick wall. That's capital N. Anything after that has to be within epsilon of L. It can be epsilon up to L more, or epsilon, sorry, it can be L plus epsilon more, or it can be L take away epsilon. That is, it's within an epsilon band. You can go epsilon below L, you can go epsilon above L. Now, this may be is a sub n. That's a sub n. Now b sub n has to be bigger than or equal. So an equal. So maybe that's b sub n. And c sub n has to be larger than all three. In fact, only after this line do they have to be larger. They didn't have to be larger before. So maybe C sub n, maybe C sub n goes this way. Sometimes it's lower, sometimes it's larger. Okay, it can be all over the place. For once it passes N, capital N, 
it has to be the largest. Nothing can be larger. It can tie it, but nothing can be larger. And what happens is, as we go out further and further, what we have is that A sub N is getting really, really close to L. And B sub N, it's really, really getting close to L. Well, we don't know that. I apologize. C sub N is getting really, really close to L. So where do you think the purple can go? It can just go in between the blue and the yellow. But it's getting closer and closer to L as well. It has to. It's being squeezed in. That completes this proof with the little diagram. Hope you liked this video. If you did, leave a comment. If you didn't, yeah, leave a comment. And if there's a proof that you like to see, leave it in the comment and I'll try to prove that theorem. Most of all, watch and learn.